Hello. Okay, so this is a short talk about uh, how nutrition is potentially modulating cancer biology. Uh, I gave this talk this morning, well, this afternoon, at a translational cancer symposium here in Sydney at Westmead. And uh, so, uh, because it's short, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm already doing something more extensive. Well, in Italian now, I'm gonna do it in English, but you know, this is basically uh, a short talk just to give you an idea of what we know about nutrition and cancer. Okay, so we know that excessive adiposity, so being overweight and obese is increasing the risk of developing several cancers. This is a New England Journal of Medicine paper. And in, particularly, in particular, is increasing the risk of colon cancer, breast cancer, endometrial, kidney, the renal, renal cell, the esophageal, pancreatic, liver, gallbladder, gastric, gastric cardia, and others. And uh, the mechanisms just to, in this cartoon, I'm just very concisely, I mean, it's, it's, it's a bit more complicated, but just to give an idea. So if you are in a, in a, in a, in a positive energy balance, meaning that your caloric intake is higher than your energy expenditure, Basically, you are depositing this extra energy into the adipocytes and other organs eventually. And so these adipocytes become hypertrophic, especially in the central, central fat. And these hypertrophic adipocytes are producing a number of hormones called adipokines. So there is an increase in leptin, there is a reduction in adiponectin, an increase in free fatty acids, and many other molecules that are primarily causing insulin resistance. So the body becomes resistant to the action of insulin. And if there is insulin resistance, what happens, at least in the first stage, there is compensatory hyperinsulinemia. So the beta cells are secreting more insulin to overcome insulin resistance. So one is hyperinsulinemia, Insulin resistance, the liver level is causing a reduction in SHBG, steroid hormone binding globulin. Therefore, there, are, there is more bioavailability of testosterone, estrogen, you know, sex hormones. This is a, like the transport of sex hormones in the circulation. And insulin resistance at the liver level is also causing a reduction in IGF BP1 and IGF BP2 that are the transporter of IGF-1. So there is more bioavailable IGF-1. Uh, excessive adiposit is also increasing inflammation. It's well known. If you, are, if you have abdominal obesity, if you have increased waist circumference, you have more inflammatory cytokines, higher C-reactive protein is a marker of inflammation. You have increased oxidative stress, and uh, uh, excessive adiposit is also increasing through the aromatase activity estrogens, total estrogens. So it's not only the bioavailable, but also total estrogens. And all these factors, you know, estrogens, IGF-1, insulin, sex hormones, uh, inflammation, are anabolic hormones, growth factors that are increasing cell division, especially in uh, epithelial cells and stem cells in, 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 in uh, epithelial tissues. So cell, more cell division, more cell proliferation, more ap less apoptosis, more genomic instability, more cell division, more random mutations, more invasion, more aggressiveness, more risk of metastasis, okay? The other important factor that we are discovering that you know this excessive adiposity through many mechanisms but also through leptin 
is basically impairing, is blocking the activity of NK cells and T cytotoxic cells that are important for recognizing and killing cancer cells. So these are, in a very short summary, you know, some of the main hormonal immune adaptations, abnormal adaptations, uh, due to excessive caloric intake. Now, in contrast, what we know is that calorie restriction without malnutrition not only is increasing lifespan up to 50% in several model organisms, in particular in, in, in mice and rats, but is also the most powerful intervention in rodents to reduce cancer. As you can see here, in, 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 in black ad libitum fed animals and in these um, bars here, uh, they are the CR. So CR has a huge preventive, so this is the percentage of uh, prevalence of cancer, this huge preventive effect in different strains of mice. And this is a meta-analysis of um, 82 published studies with several types of tumors and color restriction progressively is reducing the, 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 the incidence of cancer up to 60% less. And independently, not only spontaneous cancer, but also radiation and chemicals. So to make a long story short, calorie restriction is one of the most powerful intervention in animal model in preventing cancer. But what about in non-human primates? So these are the results of the Wisconsin CR monkey study. As you can see here, these monkey that, monkeys that have been 20 years of calorie restriction, not only they live significantly longer and they have, and have less chronic disease, but in particular, they, they are completely prevented from uh, type 2 diabetes and there is a 50% reduction in cancer, a 50% reduction in cardiovascular disease, less sarcopenia, less frailty, less brain atrophy in, in some key area of the brain. What about in humans? So these are some of the results of calorie. This is a multi-center study. I was a co-investigator uh, at the Washington University, the PI was John Holody, my dear friend John Holody, and then you know we have Tufts and Pennington and Duke. So we randomized 220 people uh, to 25% calorie restriction. These were young, 20 to 50 years old. It's very important, young, 20 to 50 years old, BMI 22 to 28. So basically, uh, upper limit of normality for BMI is slightly overweight. And uh, we had a significant reduction in body weight, you know, minus eight kilos at 12 months maintained for the other 12 months. So on, on, on average, we had a 10% weight loss. We had a significant reduction in cholesterol. And remember, these are young, healthy individuals, significant reduction in total cholesterol, significant reduction in triglycerides, significant reduction in systolic uh, and diastolic blood pressure, significant reduction in insulin resistance, so meaning that there is less insulin secretion, less hyperinsulinemia. Uh, there was a significant reduction in oxidative stress. These are the um, urinary F2 isoprostent. That is a, the gold standard to measure oxidative stress. Um, so there was a significant reduction already 12 months, sustained at 24 months. And uh, there was a significant reduction in inflammation, significant reduction in C-reactive protein, TNF-alpha, white blood cells, lymphocytes, so major anti-inflammatory effect. Uh, and in this randomized clinical trial, we saw also significant reduction in leptin, in uh, T3, no change in IGF-1, but there was a significant and sustained increase in IGF-BP1 meaning less bioavailable IGF-1. Uh, if we look at people that have been practicing severe calorie restriction, severe, severe moderate calorie restriction without malnutrition, uh, what we see, again, you know, there are many data, but, you know, this is just, in, you know, 
know, these hormones that we were talking about in the cartoon before, they, 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 both calorie restriction exercise have much lower insulin at, 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 at fasting and in response to a glu um, glucose low, the glucose tolerance test, even if exercise is more powerful than calorie restriction, you see, you see how different interventions, they are doing different things. So endurance exercise, there is no doubt that is more powerful than color restriction in improving insulin sensitivity. And one of the reasons is because exercise has, has a unique effect in increasing GLUT4 in the skeletal muscle that CR doesn't. But if we look at uh, BP1, IGF BP1, color restriction and not Exercise, well, even exercise, but calorie restriction is much more powerful in increasing IGF BP1 and reducing uh, bioavailable IGF1. There is a um, lower leptin, uh, lower insulin, much higher adiponectin than exercise, lower T3 in calorie restriction, no change in exercise, and much lower reduction in inflammation with calorie restriction than with exercise. So again, you know how calorie restriction does things that exercise does not and vice versa. And then again, uh, for testosterone, calorie restriction is, was reducing testosterone, not exercise. Estradiol, again, you know, 17 beta estradiol was significantly reduced in the CR, also in the exercise, but not as powerful as in the CR. Sterohormone binding globulin, huge increase, so less total and bioavailable sex hormones, so no change in the AGS sulfate. And finally, as you can see here, calorie restriction has a much more powerful anti-inflammatory effect than exercise, endurance exercise, of course, and controls is a reference group and TNF alpha. So as you can see here, we can you know, with a simple nutritional intervention, basically uh, uh, modify all these hormones and growth factors and inflammatory cytokines and oxidative stress factors that are extremely important in the pathogenesis, in the, uh, in the initiation and most importantly, progression of, uh, of cancer. Now, let's move from the metabolic hormonal adaptations to the molecular mechanism. So how it works, how these hormones are changing at the molecular, at the cellular level, the risk of cancer. So this is a cartoon that is very important. So basically, you know, what we see here is that, you know, calorie restriction is doing many things, but in particular is reducing insulin IGF-1 and I show you you know I show you the data so basically people on color restriction both in randomized clinical trial and in the longitudinal chronic study they had significantly lower insulin much lower insulin and significantly lower bioavailable IGF-1 because IGF BP-1 was much higher so basically, there was there is less insulin and less IGF-1 binding to the receptors, and therefore there is a downregulation of the PI3K AKT pathway. It is a crucial pathway for cell proliferation, survival, and many other things. Because as you can see here, when there is a downregulation of AKT, what happens is that you know there is a increase in FOXO. FOXO is an important transduction factor that is basically translocating. When, I, when AKT is, is low, is translated from the cytoplasma to the nucleus, and when it binds to the DNA, it causes several important things. One is increasing genes, and we show in humans also protein for autophagy. So basically, uh, because the cells through FOXO is sensing that there is less energy by available for growth, so he said, you know, where are going to get the, en the extra energy to, to, to produce ATP to maintain the basic cellular function from digesting dysfunctional organelles like dysfunctional mitochondria, dysfunctional proteins that are digested through autophagy to produce substrates for the Krebs cycle. 
products. And so basically in this way, there is a cleanup of the garbage of the dysfunctional products within cells. The uh, increase in FOXO is also increasing DNA repair genes like DDD1, is increasing antioxidant genes like SO2 and catalase, and is blocking, inhibiting cycling D1, D2, D3 that are very important in cell cycle. So meaning that they are, they are lowering cell proliferation. And the, the message is that less cell proliferation, less random mutations, less accumulation of nasty mutation are making cancer cells becoming more and more and more aggressive and invasive and metastatic. Okay, so it's a process of accumulation of damage due to lots of random mutations, uh, less antioxidant capacity, so capacity to repair DNA, less DNA repair, and color restriction does by through the insulin agio one pathway instead of increase all these important anti-cancer, anti-aging functions. So that's the beauty, you know, how we can translate metabolic into molecular mechanisms. And we know that, you know, this, this idea, this, this, this downregulation of the insulin IGF-1 and TOR pathway uh, is, is extending lifespan, is protecting against cancer in many, through, uh, in, in many animal models. So it's, un, 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 it's ancestrally conserved from yeast to worms to flies to mammals. Whenever we downregulate through diet or genetic manipulation, you know, you know, we are knocking down genes along these nutrient sensing pathways and rapamycin is an inhibitor of mTOR, you know, the animals are living much longer. So now we now know the basic metabolic molecular pathways that are regulating aging and they are reducing the risk of cancer. And there are other ones. I mean, this is, you know, there are, you know, many other adaptation, for example, you know, we have shown even in humans, you know, color restriction, not only is increasing FOX and what I already told you, but is also increasing heat shock factor one and heat shock protein 70. These are important chaperones that are recognizing misfolded proteins and they are trying to refold the protein in the original um, shape or if they're not able to refold them, you know, they send the proteins, the misfolded proteins, the, 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 the toxic proteins into the lysosome to get digested. So, the, by, and so that's mean an increase in proteostasis. And proteostasis is very important. For example, the naked mole rats that are totally resistant to cancer and they live much longer, we are, you know, proteost an increased proteostasis is one of the important mechanisms for the cancer prevention and for the longevity. And then there are, as I said, you know, several pathways, inflammatory pathways that are downregulated by uh, color restriction in both animals and humans. Another important mechanism that I think is essential, this is a paper just has just been published in Nature Immunology, showing that basically in obese individuals, the high leptin and the lipotoxic environment is impairing basically the activity of NK cells that are, they're, they're, they're supposed to recognize and kill tumor cells, but because of the lipotoxic high, high adiponectin environment, these cells are not working, they are not able, they are deficient in killing as you can see here, in killing the, 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 the tumor cells. So this is another mechanism, you know, because apart from the accumulation of mutation, the DNA repair and stuff like that, you know, there is also the immune system that is, if, when it's working well, is able to recognize cancer cells and uh, kill the cancer cells. And accumulating data in, are suggesting that basically, at least in animals, that, you know, the this lipotoxic environment of obesity is impairing this immune killing uh, of cancer cells. And immunity is also heavily regulated by the, 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 the gut microbiome that is also regulated from what we eat, as I'll show you in, in a second. So what is emerging from all the data we are accumulating is that, you know, if you have 
an excessive caloric intake uh, and high protein intake, you know, basically you have an expansion of the gut uh, microbiota mass. So you have much more in terms of kilograms of, of bacteria in your gut is much um, bigger. And if you do calorie restriction, you have a shrinking of the mass of bacteria living in your gut. In your gut. And, you know, all these bacteria, especially, they produce... Uh, LPS and other toxic compounds that have an effect on the uh, gut uh, mucosa in terms of shortening, disrupting the barrier. So, you know, some of these uh, uh, molecules and, uh, can, can go through the, 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 the barrier and, 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 and stimulate inflammation through neutrophils and changing the, 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 the uh, composition of the immune function with uh, uh, basically uh, down regulation of the, th, the, the th17 lymphocytes that are very important for autoimmunity and inflammation and, and, and allergic disease and uh, apart from the caloric intake the a low fiber diet so now we are talking about the composition of the diet you know you know it's not only you know you can have a 50 percent calorie restriction by eating junk food you know refined processed food and you don't gonna have the same effect, you know, for, because what we are discovering that a, a high fiber diet, typical of the Mediterranean diet, Okinawan diet, of this traditional diet that are associated with a, a lot of centenarians and not the paleo. There are not paleolithic people who are living longer. <clears throat> and, <clears throat> but, you know, from what we know, all the uh, people who were hunter gatherers, you know, they were living very, 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 when they were very young, there are no population of hunter gatherers that you know they were living like you know like the Mediterranean or the Okinawans for 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 decades. They were become centenarians. Okay, so fiber diet is very important to regulate through G-coupled receptor these uh, uh, Th17 immune cells and to reduce inflammation. And then uh, high fat, especially high animal fat cholesterol diet is altering the, the bile acids metabolism that is also involved in cancer. Now, we know, this is a study, you know, we, uh, that, you know, Jeffrey, I, I was a collaborator of Jeffrey Gordon, we published in Science, and as you can see here that, you know, for example, we know that, you know, among all the nutrients, both in animals and in humans, protein intake and insoluble fiber are two of the most important nutrients for the regulation of uh, of the type of bacteria and the function of the bacteria living in our gut that are shaping, among many other things, immune function. And then, you know, just to tell you how important it is, you know, this is a paper we published in Cell with Jeffrey Gordon showing that, you know, turmeric that is one of these phytochemicals, you know, that is contained in, 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 in the curry. Um, the same concentration of this phytochemical depending on the type of bacteria coming from people with different diet is changing transit time. And transit time, for example, is very important for the development of colon cancer because the longer is the transit time, uh, the longer is the exposure to genotoxic uh, carcinogenic substances. And so what we, what, 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 what we are finding is basically that you know, the effects of turmeric on transit time depends on the type of bacteria that, you, that are living in our gut that depends from the diet we have. And the same, this is another paper we published with Jeffrey Gordon, cell host microbiome. The effects, the metabolic effects of calorie restriction are in part related to the type of bacteria that are living in our gut. So what I'm telling you is that the diet that we have with, that is shaping the type of bacteria living in our gut is changing the response to calorie restriction to vitamins and phytochemicals that we are ingesting with it. Super, super interesting. Okay, so <clears throat> I don't have time to go into the details. So, so, you know, if you want to read more about, you know, how different nutritional interventions are protein, amino acid, specific amino acid intake, calorie intake, fasting, uh, different type of fasting, and uh, 
the microbiota are acting on specific uh, metabolic molecular pathways. You can read this review article that I wrote with Linda Partridge, published in Cell in 2015. So let me conclude, you know, there, there's much more information, but you know, I'm, this is just a short lecture. Let me conclude to tell you what I think, you know, why nutrition is important. I, I think, you know, I already told you why, but let, let, let's summarize. So many of the cancers you can see here, you know, breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, they take, you know, around 40 years, you know, from the first mutation, you know, here, for, for example, for, for prostate cancer, there is a 20 years uh, to develop um, uh, dysplasia, and then another 10 years or more to develop a latent carcinoma, another 3, 15 years to have a clinical carcinoma, something that you can detect and then eventually can met become a metastasis and kill you. And the same is for breast, as you can see here, 20 plus another 15 years and colon. So the message is that, you know, for cancer to develop is not only, the mutations are not necessary. So what we have discovered, you know, you know each one of us has, during his lifetime is accumulating uh, mutations in millions of our cells. So we have several mutations of oncogene and suppressor genes uh, and the accumulation of these mutations that are definitely essential for the initiation of cancer. However, they seem to be not sufficient for the clinical progression of most epithelial tumors. For the clinical progression, we need a conducive soil. So these mutations, these seeds can germinate only if the microenvironment, the oncometabolic milieu is conducive, if there is insulin resistance, inflammation, all these hormones that I was telling you about are, you know, changing, you know, these, they, 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 they are reducing the DNA, the DNA repair, uh, enzyme and mechanism, if they are increasing cell proliferation and therefore random mutation, if they are increasing oxidative stress and reducing autophagy only uh, and impairing the immune system, only in that, only if this happens, the tumor can progress and become more and more aggressive. And so again, you know, the immune system is also very important to keep in check uh, and, 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 and kill uh, tumor cells. So this is the last slide, just to summarize, you know, from a normal cells, you know, we have a hit, so one cell can become mutated, but because before a cancer can be clinical detectable and metastatic, it has to accumulate tens and tens of nasty mutations. And for this nasty mutation to be accumulated, you know, we need basically all these, uh, uh, hormones and uh, inflammatory factors that are helping the cancer cells to accumulate more mutation because the normal cells that are exposed to high leptin, low adiponectin, insulin resistance, high insulin, high IGF-1, high growth factors, high inflammatory, they are accumulating more and more mutations. And all these interventions I was telling you about physical exercise, caloric intake, protein. I didn't have time to go into the test, but also protein is very important because it is regulated the IGF-1 mTOR pathway, which is essential for, for longevity in cancer. And then uh, probably the gut microbiota, the type of fiber we eat and other foods are changing how the immune function, how our immune system is working and how is good to recognize and kill immune cancer cells so that, you know we keep the tumor in check so i would like to thank you know my collaborators at washington university and uh, other friends and collaborators at mit nia and roswell park park cancer institute at harvard frank who and coconut for 
their precious collaborations in uh, in, in uh, collecting some of the data that you know I've presented to you today. Thank you.